All right, everyone, welcome to, you know, us nearing the end of these Jurassic World Dominion reviews. The second to last set, the second most expensive set of the Wave 2, 76949, Kikinotosaurus and Therizinosaurus attack. This is 110 pieces, and it's like, what, like $130? Let's get into it, because this set is polarizing, to say the least. And as we usually do, let's start with the characters. Let's start with the boring ones. Talking about them before, look, it's Claire and Owen. Claire, or Owen with his printed legs, and Claire, the exact same Claire as before. Woohoo, look, we got them yet again. Was this a third time for each of these in an identical costume? Boring. Then we got Kayla Watts, who luckily only has one other version of herself, so she isn't reprinted, you know, she isn't like reused too many times. The hairpiece is still totally wrong, but it's a pretty, you know, it's a nice figure. It's alright to have it twice. But then let's get to some interesting stuff. Henry Wu, which for some reason has a beard. And if you've seen Dominion, he does not have a beard. He doesn't even have this hair. He has, like, long hair, more akin to Rain Delacorte than anything else. I mean, the shirt's nice, nice little sweater. It looks like himself in the movie, actually. The sweater's a good job. <laughs> because he looks like a homeless man wandered into a science lab in most movies. He's sitting there wearing his sweater. He got imprinted gray legs, not too much to talk about. The fact that it's just completely inaccurate to the movie. Like, for some reason... They added facial hair, and they gave him really short hair. Don't know why. It's really weird. And we get uh, Ellie, which is another reuse, but again, there's only one other Ellie in the thing. So, you know, she, uh, it's, it's alright. She's, she's, I said I liked her figure before, and I still do, and I just realized. I said every figure, every female figure in the wave used this hair, because 99% of them do. But I forgot, Kayla here does not. Kayla is the only girl in the line to have unique hair, and it's unfortunate it's the wrong color. And then lastly, this is the only set where you can get old Alan Grant, who has a very, I'm going to be honest, generic, like, his shirt looks like it could have fit a hundred different characters, his pants are unprinted, like, he looks very generic, I'm just going to be honest, he doesn't look too special, although the amber block he does have is pretty cool, not going to lie. I'm not saying Alan Grant is bad, I'm just saying it looks like they, uh, it looks like they went with a shirt that would fit just about anyone rather than more Alan Grant, you know? So let's talk about the uh, controversial stuff. This is the Giganotosaurus. Now, those of you with keen eyes might notice this Giganotosaurus is not the regular Giganotosaurus. Sorry, I thought I just realized. Yeah, so if those of you with keen eyes might notice this is not the regular Giganotosaurus, but is in fact a modified version. Why? Because these are the Giganotosaurus's standard arms. Now, if you look at them side by side, you notice the arms of these two are about the same size. So why they went with the two-fingered T-Rex hands rather than the three-fingered hands that the Giganotosaurus should have is beyond me. My modified version is ten times better just because I got the right number of fingers. And again, look at them side by side. They're nearly the exact same length. It changes nothing. Even on the box art, if we actually... I can't really show it, but on the side, there's a, there's a picture of the Giga on the side of the box with three fingers. And yet Lego decided to give him the wrong arms. And also, you notice, that these are the right color, too. This is legitimately... They legit not only had the arms that were the proper shape with a number of fingers, but they also had it in the exact same color. I don't know what the Lego designers were thinking when they were designing this thing, but that was a... That is, that is just the, like, the exact opposite of the correct decision. So you have two arms of nearly the same size, one of which has an incorrect number of fingers, one of which has the correct number of fingers, and you decide to pick the wrong number of fingers. Why? Don't know. It's the dumbest decision I've ever seen, and it makes no goddamn sense. I fixed their Giga, so now it's a better Giga. You're welcome, Lego. I fixed your problem for you with a brick that you already made. <laughs> So yes, if you give the Giga the right arms, it's not too bad. I mean, it reuses the Indominus head, which is a little disappointing. But, I mean, it's good enough. The, but, I mean, the new model back is neat, but uh, I don't know why they made it, because they're never going to be able to use it for anything besides this Giga. Like, at all. No creature has a back like this anywhere else. Maybe you could squeeze in a Spinosaurus somewhere, like Oxalea or Sucomimus, and just pretend that it's the right one. Which, honestly, would still be more accurate than the next dinosaur coming up. But yeah, for the movie Giga, it's pretty accurate. For real-life Giga, it's atrociously bad. Although, I do like all the scars. I'm going to say that. I appreciate all the scar details on this thing. Also, the colors are wrong. I say that because people keep saying, No, 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 it's green, it's green. I'm just going to say a couple things here. One, every person sees colors a little bit differently. So, I mean, I say it's wrong. But 
no one is technically wrong. We each see our world in a different way. And the easiest way to easiest way to know that is there are colorblind people, people who scientifically proven to see different see colors differently than all of us. And not only that, but there are different kinds of colorblindness. That's all you need to know to, to think. Well, maybe people with without colorblindness might still see colors differently. You know. So to say that it's the wrong color, what I mean is that none of the photos I've ever looked at with the Giganotosaurus from Dominion have looked this green. And the Battelle toy line has the gray. The Some of the official artwork uses tan and gray, but I've never, not once, outside of this Lego set, see someone interpret this thing as green. And that's what's bothering me the most about it, is that it's like, I've seen tan in the official promotional stuff, I've seen gray in the official promotional stuff, I've seen toys and box art with tan and gray gigas, but I've not seen green anywhere besides this one model. I don't know what to think about this, but I'm gonna say this. With these arms, it's a bronze. With these new arms, I'd say it's a high silver. It doesn't make it quite to gold, I don't think. It's not one of the better creatures. It's way worse than Pyraptor and Kethlequadalus. It's cool, but I just don't think it, it earns enough to get a solid gold. Now let's move on to somebody else. A little someone who has been a freaking pain in my ass. This absolutely horrible Therizinosaurus. Let's just get down to business, shall we? The head and the arms are fine. They show considerable effort. Somebody took the time to sculpt this absolutely immaculate head, and if it were attached to a better rest of the dinosaur, this would be perfect. And these fingers are not perfect, but they did a good job working with Lego and making what they could. I'm not going to knock them for hard work, where they clearly said, we need to do something about this, and they put in the time and effort to try to sculpt something. It may not have come out perfectly, but effort is what matters, because the rest of this was no effort. These legs, look. Why is there a talon claw? Stop reusing the, <laughs> the Indoraptor's legs and make, just, just make a version without the talon claw. Why are the Baryonyx and Therizinosaurus with talon claws? Just, just make a new foot. The tail is too long, the body is too skinny, and it just doesn't look like a Therizinosaurus. It looks like, you know what, it looks like an anorexic Therizinosaurus raptor hybrid. If that's what they're going for, then fantastic, but if they're going for an accurate Therizinosaurus, it's an atrociously bad job. The color scheme is fine, the head is fine, the hands are fine, but it's everything back here that is the problem. This Therizinosaurus is so, so bad. I don't even think I need to uh, point this out too much to people who are watching videos on this channel. But uh, let me give Lego an example of what a Therizinosaurus is supposed to look like. It's kind of hard to show off because it's so tall, because that's kind of the point. A Therizinosaurus is supposed to be tall. This is my brick-built Therizinosaurus. And if you just compare it to this absolute shrimp, he's standing right next to it, you can't even see the head of my Therizinosaurus, first of all. And you can see it's got a thick, robust body. Some big theropod legs, like legitimately. These are the kind of legs you need for a Therizinosaurus. It was a big theropod. It was huge. It was absolutely gargantuan. And look at this. Look at this shorter tail in proportion to the body. This is the kind of body you need to give to your Therizinosaurus. Not this. This is terrible. I don't even got the colors right, but it doesn't matter. I think I like the red look better. Look, the fact is mine isn't perfectly scientifically accurate or accurate to the movies. But I think I reached a nice middle ground with my bricks, and that's the problem. Lego just didn't reach that middle ground. They just they just gave up halfway through. It's like they're like, oh, design the head off. It's taking a while. Design this is really taking a while. I don't want to keep working on this. Just slap the Indoraptor on it and we'll recolor that. It's pure laziness, and it angers me every time I look at it. But <sighs> back over here where I found it. Yeah, we're, we've been nine minutes and all I've talked about is the dinosaurs. This is this set is interesting to talk about. Yeah, so let's just get on with it. No metal. It doesn't deserve anything. If it were better and showed, like, effort on the rest of the body, it would be fine. Actually, let me point this out. If we just looked at this piece, this is, this is, this is, this is a platinum tier thing. These arms, they're not good, but they are showing effort. I would give them a solid gold medal. But then the rest of it is no medal all the way down. And in fact, I would go even farther into saying that it deserves to give, it needs to give me a medal back for having to waste my time looking at how bad it is. So that's why it gets a no medal. It's just so bad on the rest of it. 
And now that we've gotten past the dinosaurs and we've reached the 10-minute mark, let's move on to the rest of the build, shall we? So we got first we've got the Biosyn helicopter, or gyrocopter, whatever the heck it is. It's honestly all right. I mean, the fact is that people point out, like, the movie, it's because, like, this thing, it's straight on to the top bar is down. It's the other way around in the movie. The top bar is straight out, and this bar is up to the right. But, you know, it's not like it's awful. They did a decent job representing it in Lego form. There's probably supposed to be something up here, but I don't know what it is. I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> it's got a nice propeller blade. It's got some cool Biosyn stickers I really like, and I think I could use those for my own helicopters in the future. But just buy, you know, a sticker sheet for this set and use it to build some cool helicopters. But I mean, we've gotten 100 helicopters, and this is on the larger side of choppers we've gotten in the LEGO Jurassic World line, so I'd say it's a pretty good uh, addition to the set. And then we got the Biosyn Lab, which is honestly pretty cool. It fell apart when I was grabbing it, so <coughs> it's a little dusty, too. But yeah, so hopefully it doesn't fall apart when I'm trying to look at this. This is a pretty cool look. We've got another Biosyn sticker, very nice. The foliage outside, I love having foliage in these Jurassic World sets. This thing is filled with detail. There's like, look at this, there's, there's a security camera down here. We can see the bay where uh, Ian Malcolm drives the car out of it. I mean, in this one, it wouldn't work because that thing is so tiny. But we've been around, we see like a gas pump thing. We've got little fire extinguisher, I guess. And then inside, we got a little lab. we got like amber and like a magnifying research table. we got this chair. we got this weird like syringe arm. we got an incubation little thing with some dinosaur eggs in it, if I can get it open. There we go. And we got a monitor for up here. We can see these two stickers with monitoring both the Therizinosaurus and Giganotosaurus. We got a coffee machine. We got a shelf of amber. We got a staff desk. We got a spinny chair. We got a dinosaur head on a little mount over here. There's a radar dish. There's a helicopter pad. This thing, this kind of build is what we need. That Malta set with that skeletal build is garbage. But this, this is what I want to see. If you're going to build a building facade, look at how much detail was in that thing. It's beautiful. This right here is a fantastic addition to this set and is a solid platinum build if we're going to be talking about Lego, you know, building facades. Now, unfortunately, I can't really get this in frame entirely because it's so tall, but we'll try our best to describe this tower as, you know, I wonder if I could just... Yeah, that's right. It's it's really in there. You cannot get it out. So I'm just going to tilt it down. We can take a look inside. This one's not nearly as detailed. It's got some cool monitors on the inside. I can't know if you can really see it in there. Looks like it should be fine. This little thing right here, I got a ladder that does not extend all the way down, so it's basically worthless. There's a bunch of little details on this one, too. You can see there's, like, railing, there's little outcrops of, like, machinery here. And then there's the play feature, which, if we just grab the Giga and have him, like, bite down on this and pull it out, this little thing comes down. Like, you can stick his head in. It's neat. It's a cool play feature. This is another platinum-type build, another platinum-tier build. And... I think that about covers it. I mean, it's got cool foliage at the bottom, too. Both of these buildings look fantastic. The helicopter looks great. The Therizinosaurus looks ugly. The Giga has the wrong arms. Dr. Wu does not have a beard and short hair. This set is one of contrasts. Harsh contrasts. On one side, you get, you know, some cool characters. On the other side, you get... Sorry, on one side, you get some cool characters. On the other side, you get reused or... You get horribly over-reused characters and one that's just straight up wrong you got a bad giga with the wrong arms you got a terrible looking therizinosaurus i mean where do you even rate this what half of this shows a monumental lack of effort or care and the other half shows an extreme amount of care like who built this building they are they are an awesome lego designer <laughs> they did a great job with this but then these guys come in, and what, what the heck are they doing? It's like, I don't know how to rate this one. I feel like this one can't go with a standard rating because it's so harsh. You go from no metal to platinums to in the middle to all over the place. This set individually can't be rated because it can't cover the full spectrum of everything. I can't... There is no decisive rating for this. Everything has to be rated individually. There is Xenosaurus, no metal. Giga, silver metal. Building, platinum, other building, platinum, and character, hot gallon grass, pretty good stuff. It's just, I can't give a rating to this. It's so all over the place. It's completely insane. I don't know, man. This was an experience when I was building it, and I just, I don't know. I don't know what else there's to say about it. I think the fact that I can't even come up with a solid rating because this thing is so all over the place is the kind of, it kind of is the rating on its own, isn't it? 
it really does give the full opinion as to how I feel about the set and a proper representation of what it is. And what it is, is two teams. One team which had a lot of heart and passion, the other team which is being lazy and didn't really care, and we and they clash together, and we get this set. I don't know, man. I can't. I, I, no matter how hard I think, I can't come up with a rating. It's just not possible. If you wanted to just throw out a rating, give it a silver, because it ha it's, it's so middling. It goes from extreme bads to extreme goods. It can only be right smack dab in the middle. So many silver sets this wave. It's a real disappointment. I'm going to have 15 minutes. I'm just going to end it here. God, this set was just a wild ride.